That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And tonight we're here to talk about... Ourselves. Trails of Debris. What is that from? Suddenly Last Summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> we figured uh, it would be a good time to introduce ourselves. Because we never did. <laughs> Where would you like to begin? Uh, Why did we start the channel? <laughs> uh, with, but, you <laughs> Or do we want to say a little something about ourselves? You start. Oh, well, we're married. Mm -hmm. 12 years. Yeah. Nick is the cinephile. I'm just a victim of circumstance. Oh, boy. But uh, we thought it would be a good idea to uh, make these videos like sort of as a fun project to incorporate something he enjoys to my life more <laughs> in, a, in a positive way uh -huh. <laughs> you uh i well we uh met in minneapolis uh and and we lived there for the first couple of years being together and i started writing for a website called eye on cinema and in 2010 and then a year later we moved to los angeles and that uh, allowed me to have a lot more access to press screenings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and that led to flying all over the world to attend and cover major film festivals. Uh, and uh, and the Joseph ended up, of course, yeah, being a victim of circumstance and taking along a lot to a lot of films. And um, and this, I think, was a way to incorporate a project that was just for fun to work together on. Yeah, I don't think we thought uh, anyone would watch these videos. Initially, I wasn't even going to make them public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so funny how that turned out. Uh, I think also I wanted to see review videos. First of all, the whole spoiler thing. Mm -hmm. I really don't like watching, well, like people who review trailers. That does not appeal to me. Or people who review films and don't really tell you like the best parts. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make videos where we just tell it all. Um, you know, ideally someone wouldn't watch our videos if they don't want the movie to be spoiled. Right. Or if you're sensitive about an actor or a project, I feel like it's weird that people will find, you know, if you know you like Will Ferrell, then don't watch a review about Eurovision <laughs> and they get offended that we think it looks like a troll. But anyway, um, so that's where we started. Um, I th another note on this, I personally do find it difficult to spoil films because uh, I had a, my, my childhood upbringing, I was chastised greatly for ruining endings of films by my mother. And so for years later, um, that's kind of been been a thing. Like I, I dance around synopsis, which is why I usually uh, allow him to do that. Sure. But again, I, I'm also of the... Um, uh, mind frame that trailers themselves are spoilers. So if you really don't want to know anything about it, tend to all that stuff afterwards is yeah. what I think. But another topic I think uh, relating to why we wanted to do these kind of videos is I think a lot of times when I read movie reviews or see people talking about film, they're really just pandering. Mm -hmm. Like they just want, especially in writing, like they want to come up with a one-liner that will be used like... Oh, yeah, like purposeful... For promotional material. Purposeful pull quotes. Like, like saying, like, horror masterpiece or... Oh, yeah. Best you, film of the year. <laughs> I feel like if most critics had to... I, I think there's uh, an automatic sincerity, unless you're a really good actor, which many of them exist. There's an automatic sincerity in having to explain yourself uh, and your opinion in person. I do think that I am better served uh, in written form. Uh, not that I, I feel less authentic that way, but I've found that through this experience that it's really hard to dance around a subject without giving your true opinion when you're saying it. Yeah. Um. Next thing, we are not comedians. No. We're not trying to be funny. Um, I'm not trying to be a caricature of a sassy black man mm -hmm. um, or sassy gay black man. Uh, we're just being ourselves. Uh, there are often references to Sigourney Weaver or Isabella Pear. Mm -hmm. That's yes. because Nick uh, has a lifelong obsession. But with both. Both those wonderful ladies, yes. uh, through which I, I did have gotten to meet and interview, thanks to being a critic. You have a tattoo of Isabel on your back. I have a very large tattoo of Isabel Pair on my back that that she's aware of. 
<laughs> I'm also a huge Janet Jackson fan, which is why I mention her all of the time. Mm -hmm. I have Janet Jackson tattoos. Uh, more over here. And keeping the legend alive. Yeah. Keeping the legend alive. She's still very strong and kicking. Mm -hmm. The name Fish Jelly. So that's the name of the channel. We've never actually said Fish Jelly. No. In 212 videos, we've never <laughs> said Fish Jelly. For me, I don't like the idea of like branding. Mm -hmm. I think it's it just is weird. And I, I knew we needed a name, but I didn't have any intention of saying it. Mm -hmm. The name Fish Jelly comes from the Destiny's Child song "Bootylicious." Mm -hmm. There's a lyric. Be well, it's, uh, it's like the chorus, the right? refrain. Yeah, I I always make fun of the song because well, because the lyric is "I don't think you're ready for this jelly," mm -hmm. but it, we would joke that it sounds like "I don't think you're ready for fish jelly." Yep. <laughs> so that's that's where it came from. That's where it came from. And I did write a song that we always meant to record on the off chance. This Nick wrote time. a pretty catchy like rap song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although like me rapping, I feel sounds a lot like peaches, but <laughs> but it sounds good. And maybe one day when we hit X amount of subscribers, we would record it and mm -hmm. make a video for it. Uh, how do we select films to review? Because there are a lot of comments, uh, of, like offering suggestions on films mm -hmm. we should review. We're only reviewing press screenings mm -hmm. or like re-releases on DVD. Yeah, so our films are like whatever's weekly being released. In the, the case of the pandemic, what's the streaming weekly. Uh, and also I get uh, an awful lot of Blu-rays uh, that I'm covering. Uh, so we try to cover some of the more important ones, Criterion Collection is near and dear to my heart, of course, uh, Kino Lorbord, Arrow Video, things like that. Yeah. Of the 211 videos we currently have, film reviews, uh, only five were films that we just did for fun. Yeah, to be kind of goofy or silly. Or... Yeah. Um, I mean, that's cool that people leave suggestions. And a oh, lot yeah. of them are fun movies that I also enjoy yeah. or think that they're worth talking shit about, but... I don't know that we would... Well, maybe one day we'll... When they get a Blu-ray release. <laughs> yeah. Our dynamic. So there are comments about, like, the way we interact. Oftentimes people might think that we don't get along or that I interrupt you too much, you talk too much, you're condescending towards me, I'm rolling my eyes at you. That's just our dynamic. Do people say that I'm condescending? Uh, you know. Um... <laughs> Somebody's, um, nobody said that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's just our dynamic. We actually kind of also thought that making videos would be fun because people we've known, like friends or people who meet us for the first time, uh, will often comment that they find our dynamic interesting. We've had people think we're like fighting. Yeah. The, and really, we're just having a conversation. We're just having a very vibrant, passionate conversation about abortion. And usually we both... <laughs> Agree. We're having like extreme arguments about topics we both agree on. Yeah, so. like that Maria Bamford bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you're uncomfortable watching us, don't be. We're not uncomfortable making the videos. Um, I have a memory disorder. Yes. Oh my God. I legitimately don't remember a lot of things. So it's not an act. Um, but I don't make a huge effort to take notes and remember things because I think it's kind of funny and I know that it annoys him that I don't remember a lot of things. So it's not a gimmick. It's real. I don't remember. It's, it's very real. It's very real. Uh, another comment we get is why do I try to end the videos? Like, yeah. Like I try to abruptly end them. Uh, some of it is just to be funny because I know it takes them off guard. Mm. The main reason is... Um, we're both very busy people. Very busy, very important. Gainfully employed. Um, I don't have a lot of time to spend, you know, talking extraneously about something. So, I mean, to be serious, I have like a, a budget of time in my head of how much time I want to spend on these videos. Okay, Joan. Well, if you think about, I have to watch the film, record the video, prep for it, edit it, and then upload it. So for me, a 10 minute video is about the amount of time I can spend. So when I know we're approaching the 10 minutes, that's when I usually try to cut him off. Yeah. Joseph is very much, it's not you, it's the dirt. <laughs> I'm very Faye Dunaway <laughs> and Joan Crawford and Mommy Dears. Ah. So comments, still staying in that vein. Mm -hmm. um, 
Some of the negative comments we get, YouTube does filter what they consider hate speak. So those are like in a separate section, but we get a lot of comments, homophobic comments that are interesting. They don't bother me. I'm too old and have been called every name yeah, too many times to be bothered by some imaginary person calling me another name. But I think it's interesting it's that people will look at a video that says gay homosexuals talking about something, choose to hit play, and then like be bothered by the fact that gay people are talking. Or maybe it's just these two gay people or gay brown person, I don't know, but... Um, well, that's why you started putting that. That's why I started, because initially I didn't mention like gay anything, and then because we got so many like negative comments about being gay, I was trying to give people fair warning, mm -hmm. but I guess that's not working. Uh, Fun fact, uh, most of the negative comments we get revolve around us talking about, like, white privilege. Yeah, disparagingly, yeah. As, as it should be done. <laughs> Which is, is, is not surprising, considering no. the, you know, the world we live in. So, <laughs> but, you know, it's, I think it's interesting. I expect it. I expect any time we say something about a white character behaving a certain way or about racism or... A black person being or any you know anything revolving around race people don't seem to like that um, or, or looking at anything through that a queer or racial lens i, I think is bothersome to people because yeah i've noticed comments like that too like what we always make it about race it's like but that is an important perspective always to take into consideration yeah which you know it's like everyone's all on you know this sort of kick right now on social media to promote Sure, but we, we've always done that. Sure. Our personal lives ends in the videos. Yes, but I think it's interesting that people say that, but then they seem very <laughs> bothered by it. Yes. So I don't know how f real people are being. Anyway, on a positive note, uh, what do we like most about doing these videos? The time spent together. Yeah, it is a fun, it can be a fun activity. Um, <laughs> well, I enjoy, what I enjoy most is talking about film. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. So like watching a movie with someone or a group of people and then spending time talking about it afterwards. So I think it's fun to do it and then actually like record it. And well, because I, as, as much to your chagrin, I own a film library. And there are a lot of films in this joint. <laughs> Um, but I, that to me, that's the pleasure. I, I, I love having movie nights. I like it's. It's about sharing. It's about. I, I like talking afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know. A lot. There are people who comment on these videos, and they always have nice things to say. And even yeah. though it's difficult to correspond and keep up with them, I think it's really nice to to see people be kind. So I think yeah. that's a nice benefit of doing the videos. For me, probably the biggest thing is I think it's really boosted my self-confidence. I never would have thought that I would be comfortable recording video with audio <laughs> and then sharing it with, you know, potentially the world. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I think, you know, having grown up feeling unattractive and feeling like I sound stupid, which not that that has changed so much, but, oh. but just in the sense that like, Nowadays, I don't feel as uncomfortable, so I think making videos has really helped with that. It's it's been an interesting experience um, having to talk and interact with, you know, a, a presence that's not a human, um, and and to also be articulate uh, and and uh, string together cohesive thoughts uh, has been interesting. And yeah, it, I think it's also worked that way for myself because you know. A decade, 15 years ago, hearing recordings of my voice would send me into, you know, yeah. uh, pangs of anxiety. I think lastly, just to give kind of a sense of like our personalities, I thought it would be fun for us to list our the, the five films we could watch on repeat. Mm -hmm. But Nick refused to reference <laughs> it that way. He wants to say they, they are his all-time favorites. Yes, because the yes, I, well, because I, I think that not, that distinction gives you an idea of me, which makes me sound rigid, and I'm not. So, and, but but also the, like the gives a window into what I 
a very private window of my personal tastes. Oh, okay. So here's an exercise in uh, getting to know someone's <clears> personality. <throat> so would you please list your top five all your top five all time favorites? Number five is Michael Haneke's The Piano Teacher, a 2001 film uh, starring Isabelle Huppert, who won her second um, Best Actress win at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, that I have forced Joseph to watch that movie. Uh, and yes, I could watch that at any time. And it's, it, it's very fun to watch with a group of homosexuals. Um, yeah. Number four is Possession, which I also have uh, the poster art tattooed on my back of the 1981 uh, Andrzej Zwawski film uh, starring Isabella Johnny and Sam Neill, which is a metaphor for divorce, but features a, a spectacular Isabella Johnny performance. Um, who also won Best, Best Actress at Cannes for that performance. Uh, number three is Suddenly Last Summer, uh, the Joseph L. Mankiewicz production of Tennessee Williams' play. It's a 1959 film uh, that stars Liz Taylor in one of her finest performances, who I believe would have won that Oscar that year uh, had she not been fucking Eddie Fisher. Uh, and Catherine Hepburn and Monty Clift and Mercedes McCambridge and uh, White's gay elitist that is never seen named Sebastian Venable uh, it's cannibalism, it's homosexuality in uh, highly censored uh, American cinema. Um, I did happen to do my thesis on that film. Fucking love it. Could watch it right now. Um, number two is a tie. <laughs> RuPaul likes ties, I like ties. Uh, it's really Aliens, James Cameron's sequel to Ridley Scott's 1979 uh, Alien. Uh, but you can't have one without the other. They're both phenomenal films, of course. Uh, but, I mean, Aliens has the slight edge, but as I said, I could watch either of those at any time uh, because uh, Magnificent uh, Sigourney Weaver, and I could quote many lines from that film as well. Uh, and number one uh, is probably a little more of a controversial choice uh, because it's directed by Roman Polanski. It's his 1994 film, Death and the Maiden, based on uh, the Ariel Dorfman play starring Sigourney Weaver and Ben Kingsley. And, uh, you know, I've probably watched that film hundreds of times, and if you haven't, Sigourney Weaver is amazing. Of course, didn't get an Oscar nod that year because it's a Polanski film. Somehow Jodie Foster got nominated for Nell, whatever. Uh, but it's interesting how my understanding, because I saw that when it came out in 1995, and I feel like it's a film that can be viewed through a lot of different perspectives and lenses as well, considering Polanski, who as a victim and victimizer kind of relates to both those key characters and stellar ways. Anyway, it, if that ever gets a Blu-ray release, we'll review it. But anyway, that's my top five. My uh, top five films I could watch on repeat are number five, Beetlejuice. Number four, Death Becomes Her. Oh, yeah. Number three, Kingdom Come. Number two, Mommy Dearest. And number one, to Wong Fu. Thanks, Thanks for everything, everything Julie. Julie Newmar. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's a good list. Yeah. Those are all very entertaining. Final words. Thanks for watching. Who are you? <laughs> Whoever's watching. Jerry Which, Blank. We will uh, <laughs> continue to make, try to make better videos. Oh, yes. It's always, yeah. it's always learning about ourselves and the world around us. Yeah, yeah. That's all, folks. Bye. Right, bye.